Hello, this is Michael Hackney, and today I wanted to share with you an experiment I just finished um, to basically validate and show you the airflow for my Tusk part cooling um, apparatus. Here's a photograph of it, uh, and basically the Tusk is composed of two aluminum or stainless steel tubes. There are four millimeters outside diameter is my preference. There's one here you can see, one back here you can see. These tubes can have either three holes in each tube, um, like this. Um, so you've got uh, three one millimeter holes. Um, the middle hole is pointed right at the tip of the hot end nozzle, uh, maybe a half a millimeter or millimeter below it, and then the outer two um, kind of blanket air around the outside of that. Uh, the other option is to basically have an elongated slot um, in the tube. Kind of does the same thing as the three holes, maybe a little bit more airflow. Actually, the ones I have installed here for this experiment that I'm going to show you are with the, um, the slot uh, version installed that I was testing, but the exact same experiment works pretty much identically. You can't really tell the difference in the airflow um, using the technique that I'm going to show you. Um, so the experimental setup is basically this. I've got my Tusk set up here. Um, it's installed on the printer, and there's the, uh, the uh, part uh, cooling fan here that's blowing air into the chamber, which is pushing it out of the Tusk. Um, if you read my blog, and in fact, uh, if you go to my blog at uh, sublimelayers.com and search for Tusk, you'll get um, a bunch of search results. Uh, and you can go in here and learn all about Tusk, why I developed it, um, how I've been using it, um, what the advantages are, etc. I'm not going to go into details about all of that in this in this particular uh, uh, video, but definitely I would suggest taking a look at it and um, understanding part cooling uh, a little bit better than maybe you do now. So blowing air in um, the crimp at the end of the tusk, which is what I was about ready to say, is actually aligned with the holes, as you may have noticed in the other photo that I um, that I brought up. Here we go. So there's the crimp. It's aligned with the holes. And so you can actually use that to um, direct the airflow. Grab it with a, with a needle nose pliers and just kind of rotate it until you get the flow precisely where you want it. I find that um, the, the air aimed at about one to half of a millimeter below the tip of your nozzle is ideal. You want the air hitting the part uh, to solidify it, uh, you know, cool it off and solidify it from the, uh, the melt that's coming um, out of the hot end. You don't want to be blowing it on the hot end because that cools off the hot end, and you don't want to be blowing air all over your part because that creates stresses and can cause warping and delamination and other problems. So half a millimeter to a millimeter below the part. Now the, the apparatus I have set up here is basically a, a very fine feather. Um, many of you may know that I'm an avid fly fisherman, and I tie my own flies. And one of the, one of the feathers that we use in fly fishing is called marabou. And what it is is this very, very fine, light, uh, flowing kind of feather. When it's in the water and, and wet, it just kind of pulses and looks like the fins on a fish um, that bigger fish can't resist. Well, you can also use it for very sensitive uh, uh, airflow experiments, as you'll see in the video that I just, uh, I just made and I'm going to show you here in a second. But the um, little tuft of marabou is actually uh, taped to a little wooden rod. Uh, dowel and that dowel is then in turn taped to the bottom of the uh, the tusk um, apparatus um, so that is kind of positioned down here below the nozzle okay starting the test this is its ambient Thirty percent airflow. Fifty percent airflow. Seventy five percent airflow. Got a hurricane.
Okay, so we've seen how the Tusk uh, airflow actually does work, and you can actually blow a lot of air on your part by turning the fan up to 75%. I usually print in the neighborhood of 50 to 60%, uh, particularly for materials like uh, um, PETG, um, ABS, and PLA, I maybe turn up to 70 um, I can't recall a time that I've had to turn up to 100% to get effective air cooling on anything that I've printed. Um, I just wanted to show this. Uh, this is a section of my upcoming book on 3D printing strategies. Um, I've actually printed the 12 strategies or published the 12 strategies online in various forums. It's on the Lulzbot uh, user forum. It's also on the CME CNC forum. Um, I have updated all of them and they're going in uh, to the chapter on strategies and the one about part cooling um, is strategy number 12 uh, be a fanboy and um, I'm not going to read this to you right now um, but you can go take a look at those online sources or get a copy of my book when it's available but the thing I wanted to point out is that it is really uh, part cooling really is a very misunderstood and abused aspect of FFF printing